Thank you very much. Uh, how many of you were at the session last night where we saw some videos? Oh, that's good. Okay, how many of you use Twitter? All right, that's about half of you. I'll see you later. Uh, that's about half of the group. And let me tell you that um, I took the 360 degree image of the brainstorming session last night and I posted a minute of that on my Twitter feed, which is hashtag Martha Russell. Uh, I want to have you consider something and I want to make an invitation to you. A hundred million active users on Twitter now, 50 million a day, started in 2006. Now there are 200 million registered users. It has grown incredibly. A lot of the work that we do uh, through the Media X program is industry facing in terms of trying to anticipate the edge questions that are going to guide research in the future. And in 2008, we began looking at Twitter to say, what can we learn from this? Twitter is, you might say, the tip of the iceberg. Because when people make a new blog post, when there's a press release, when a new website goes up, or when there's a new ad launched, what do people do? They tweet about it. So in a Twitter feed, 140 characters, you will often see a, a URL uh, that is a link to a blog, to a press release, to a website, to paid media, as well as conversations about what people are doing. And so we began um, asking, how can we use this? And this is what a Twitter message looks like. Um, data scientists would recognize how it can easily be parsed into content, and the reference to content, that's in red. The users, and the references to the users are in blue and the messages, and the message itself is in green. So we take that information, parse it into a database, and then begin to analyze it to look at what people are talking about, how they're talking, and what the conversation can tell us. We uh, draw links between the hashtags to understand the semantics. A hashtag is a word in a tweet that has a pound sign before it, and it's used as a self a tag by the tweeter to say this is the emphasis of what I'm saying in these 140 characters. Often there are two hashtags in a tweet and when there are we use them as entities and draw a link between them to make a semantic network. So in a network of over 4 million tweets uh, that has uh, about 4,500 nodes and 83,000 edges it looks like this. Well, it's a little bit hard to really get the gist of it. So our challenge is then to, um, to parse it, to select the tweets that we want to look at, to filter them, and then to uh, visualize them. Here's a visualization of the hashtag smart meter. And this, in this particular uh, filtering uh, process, what we have done is retain the hashtags the top three co-occurring hashtags with Smart Meter. And you can see that the conversation um, is strongly linked to utilities, that um, in terms of the utilities, people are talking about renewables, about energy efficiency, that they're talking about um, electricity, about the efficiency and the energy, but you can see that it is the news that is carrying much of the information, much of the conversation, about um, security and privacy. Uh, this is a co-occurrence network of hashtags. And we can look at, uh, go in deep into the data and look at the tweets for Smart Meter over a period of time. This particular uh, graph shows you tweets that were in 2010 in Smart Meter. And if you look at the uh, graph uh, at the top there, you see that there uh, were several blips in the conversation <coughs> in September and in October. So we can dive into the content and say, what was going on? The Wordle shows a little bit about uh, that content. And you can see that in September, the conversation was about the new um, legislation that had been passed that provided rebates for smart meter. In late October, the conversation had shifted. And here it was uh, reflecting the news stories about uh, securities and hackers. So we can go from a very broad <coughs> perspective, looking at just the, uh, at, at the overall view, uh, down into the specific content about uh, a tweet or a tweeter. 
And in that sense, uh, we're able then to uh, track the conversation, to look at attitudes, and to see what some of the key opinion leaders are talking about. Because uh, key opinion leaders are the folks who are um, tied into information and using a lot of information. You can also extract it up to the top level. And here you have um, a view of the interactive tool that we've developed so that you can go in and explore hashtags of interest to you. I know that we have some on Sacramento. I know we have some on coupons, on CFLs, and you can look at this view. So let me uh, wrap up by saying these are the URLs uh, that will either take you to uh, my tweet to see the uh, video from last night, take you to the energy behavior change uh, page on the MediaX website where you can get information about how to obtain the data that we're collecting, and uh, information to the interactive tool. Thank you. Thank you, Martha. <laughs> we have time for two concise questions. There's one here. How, how do you know that we're just not sampling a vocal whiny minority? <laughs> they are included in this, and so what we do is... <laughs> <laughs> They're coded with the double hash mark. <laughs> I, I think that that's uh, kind of a value uh, judgment that one has to make in terms of um, how you take the data, how you extract what you want to look at. And uh, the semantic interpretation, I think, uh, gives us a, a good clue on that and filtering techniques that we are using um, help. But we are, we've developed some metrics that um, have the uh, social diversity, the number of tweets divided by the number of tweeters. Uh, that look at the relative emphasis and the proportion of tweets on a certain hashtag that include or don't include a URL, and the location of the hashtag in that 140 characters. And uh, some of those tools are becoming useful to uh, taking out the noise. It's like a, converse, a crowded room and, and a conversation in a crowded room. Uh, you might hear uh, just noise, but if you filter and you focus, you can hear a conversation and, in fact, you can participate in one. One other question, thank you. Here, yes. You said that um, the content of the tweets have a shelf life, so you, you're tracking them, but do they get, the, the, sometimes a tweet have their sort of day in the sun, and then after that, the, the, the focus of, on that particular content dwindles? Absolutely. We see there's a rhythm, uh, we see there's a volume, uh, and we see that there are semantics. And uh, the uh, highest volume of tweets occurred in the women's soccer match. Uh, there were uh, something like 7 million tweets in a minute. Uh, the second highest volume was for the Japanese tsunami. I think that we've seen in uh, the Middle East and the revolts there that there have been very high volumes of tweets around a particular occurrence. Um, with the stream of Twitter data that we're collecting, we're able to, over time, follow the tweets of an individual and the way that they are retweeted, the way that they are, uh, people respond back, and to actually follow the dynamics as well as the snapshots of the conversation. And I would love to have from you any of the hashtags that you think would be meaningful for your research, for your programs, uh, because we can add them to the energy lexicon that uh, has been developed at Stanford, which we are using as the filter to collect the tweets. A, uh, a tweet is like uh, the sound of a voice, and you hear it, and then it's gone. And uh, we only have these uh, tweets to uh, study because we are capturing them on an ongoing basis. So let me know the hashtags of interest to you, and if there are data scientists who are interested in data science um, in the service of behavior and energy change, uh, I would be glad to have you work with our data uh, and work with us. So thank you. Thank you, Martha.